I don't want this video to be too negative, but this is literally my third time making this video. And the first time I was all gung-ho about the Insta360 flow. Second time I want to make amendments to my recommendations. And now the third time I'm just going to straight up say don't buy it. And here's the reason why. Now keep in mind this is Insta360's first iteration on a cell phone gimbal and just like any other first time product there's going to have a lot of flaws and based on user feedback like mine and yours I think Insta360 have a great opportunity to make an even better product on the next iteration. I'm going to go straight into the reasons why you shouldn't buy the Insta360 Flow but if you want to see other more comprehensive reviews as to why you should then you can also watch other YouTubers that's highly recommending and hyping up this gimbal. Buy one and see for yourself. Use my affiliate links if you want to, or not. Number one, ergonomics wise is not the best. The handle, good idea, bad execution. This is too soft. Any type of pressure, it just folds right in. I wish it had some sort of a stronger collapse so it prevents it from collapsing. Then your tripod, great idea. I've used this quite a bit but it's very flexible and it just bounces around a lot and it makes your image not as stable as you want it to be. Number two is the joint right here. So great idea that you have a selfie stick, right? I love the idea. And this is 360 is not the first one to think about that. DJI is the issue that I have is mostly the flexibility of the selfie stick. Especially if you're using a heavier phone like my Samsung Galaxy Note 20 Ultra. If you're using a lighter phone, probably not so much of an issue. But if you're using a heavier phone, this thing bounces a little bit more than you would like it to be. The other thing is the joint right here. So great idea that, oh, you can increase the angle so you can film yourself better because the tilt angle sucks. It literally has like no tilt at all. Okay, we'll talk about that in a little bit. This joint is so stiff and it has to be because of the amount of weight that is intended to carry. All right, now I wanna change out the shot without turning off the gimbal. Let me ask you, how would you unfold this? You can do it like this, like walnut cracking grip. Bending it backward is even harder. Not everyone's that strong. Okay, okay, I'm not saying I'm weak. Or logically, most people would use the right hand and then push it. But a lot of times, you push it too hard, you would turn it off. This gets pretty annoying, not to mention you have like a thousand dollar phone hanging here by magnet. Although I have to say, the magnetic mount, I have yet to drop it, it's been pretty good, knock on wood. Pretty freaking confusing too. Okay, cool, I got it. I briefly mentioned about the tilt axis being crappy, and the truth is, it's horrible. Let me show you. The tilt axis can literally only go like, dude, stop. Stop doing... Fuck. Ooh. All right, why don't we skip and talk about the inconsistency of the gimbal sometimes. But there are times where I, you know, took the phone off, had the gimbal in sleep mode, put it back on, and the gimbal would just like initiate and then just go back into sleep mode. Maybe it's just my unit, but I've been experiencing inconsistent behavior on startup initiation. Maybe it's just my phone being too heavy, but it does support up to, I think, 300 grams. And my Samsung Note 20 Ultra with the case is about 250 grams. So still within the limit of the supported weight. Anyway, I think the tilt axis is one of the Achilles heel of the Insta360 Flow. It's not a deal breaker, but it is definitely up there as an annoying item. Keep in mind, if you're using like a regular gimbal like the Hoa MM6 as an example, or just any other gimbals that is not like this compact, then you get a lot more range. All right, but this one you get like, I don't know, 70 degrees max. And then the rest, you have to make it up with this amazing tilt arm that I've already mentioned before. And it's such a pain to have to combine the two. Kind of awkward as well, because if you're in this type of mode, you add some more vibration to it too. There's just a lot of moving joints and parts that can add vibration. Speaking of vibration, this is the major reason why I do not recommend the Insta360 Flow. But it could get better. Insta360 is a company that I consider 
equally as much of a software company as well as a hardware company. Now they have to cater to two audiences, your iPhone people and your Android people. Just so happen I'm the Android people and I can't help but feel like iPhone always gets the love first. I get it, I use my Mac, I use my iPad, I just don't use iPhones because they're kind of boring. And what I realized is that using the Insta360 app, the footage is more shaky compared to the native Samsung video app. In my test, I was shooting 4K30 on both the Insta360 app and also on the native Samsung app. And you can see there are significantly more micro jitters in the Insta360 app footage compared to the Samsung. And I'm on the Samsung app right now, the widest angle using the selfie stick fully extended. Watch out for that. How's it looking? Sunset time right now. Okay, now we're gonna switch over to the Insta360 app. All right guys, so now we're on the Insta360 app, fully extended selfie stick on the widest angle. How's it looking? Is it bumpy? Is it bumpy or is it okay? Okay, now we're shooting on the native app, 4K30. How's it looking? Shooting 4K30 on the Insta360 app. How's it looking? All right, so now I'm on the Samsung native app selfie in full HD 1080p 30 frames per second fully extended selfie stick this is the front camera which it only shoots at 1080p right now and the selfie stick is fully extended how is it looking now I'm not sure if this is software compatibility issue but it seems like Insta360 is not taking full advantage of the image stabilization that the Samsung Note 20 Ultra has. Of course, like the Samsung native app would be much better because everything is built for that unit. While we're on the software, I also don't like the fact that you can pretty much only do program mode in a sense that you do not have any type of manual control. Maybe that's designed for beginners, but for more professional users such as myself, I would prefer to have manual exposure control. It's literally grayed out in the app and the only thing you can change is exposure comp. On to image quality. Overall, the Insta360 app's image quality is not as good as the Samsung's native app. And I could be biased because Samsung definitely put in a lot of work into making sure the video looks great. It's somewhat oversaturated at times and over sharpened for sure but the overall dynamic range looks better on the Samsung app. The video from the Insta360 app tends to look a little bit too contrasty. It's almost like it's crushing the blacks. Overall, I prefer the out of the box image on the Samsung app over the Insta360. So while testing, that's a major red flag that I realized. I was like, what the hell? I can't in good conscience recommend this gimbal at the moment. If you're planning on using the Insta360 app to film slow motions, you can't do that either. Guess what? Because your frame rate is limited to 4K 30 frames per second. The native Samsung video app can shoot 8K 24, 4K 60, 1080p 240. The Insta360 pretty much stripped that all away. The most you get is 4K 30. It makes me not want to use the Insta360 app, which leads me to my question to you. Why are you buying this gimbal? Well, we're buying this gimbal because it has great AI tracking as per all the YouTubers are reviewing and hyping on about. Yes, it is awesome and something I really love as well. However, you need to use the Insta360 app for it. So if you're using the Insta360 app and you're handicapped at 4K 30 and you see a lot of micro jitters, then it also translates to the footage looking like shit. It will limit your use case of the Insta360 flow. You're losing a lot of the reason why you're using a gimbal other than just statically tracking you and have that automatic zoom in and out, right? Like, I mean, it's cool, all software based, but the main bread and butter is that this is a gimbal to get you stabilized footage. 
And if the Insta360 app that you have to use to enable the AI tracking causes a lot of micro vibration in your video, then you won't even use the footage. Ugh. Major caveat that I wanna to bring to you guys, I'll probably never get an Insta360 product because I've flamed this one so hard. But I wanna be honest with my viewers and my subscribers, if you're new to this channel, 90% of the people watching my videos are not my subscribers. So I do hope you would subscribe and comment in below. Let me know what you guys think about this video. But overall, great first attempt, Insta360. I think you got a lot of cool things right, especially in the software side of the house, but the hardware and also real life user experience needs a little bit of improvement. I don't mean for this to be a negative video. It really is just meant to be real. I'm not paid to make these reviews, so I can say whatever the hell I want. Anyways, thank you so much for watching. I'll talk to you soon. Peace.